for centuries, the seas around Britain have provided a livelihood for coastal communities. Hope Cove is one of these historically vibrant fishing communities. In the 1930s, there were more than 30 men fishing from the village. But times have changed. Centuries-old traditions and the heritage of a Devon fishing village are on the brink of being lost forever. One husband and wife are the last of a long line of families keeping a traditional way of life alive in Hope Cove. Over the years, one by one, the fishermen have left, and now only one man remains. My name is David Morgan. I'm the last full-time fisherman living in Hope Cove. The fishing industry in Hope Cove when I started was very small scale. In fact, you could almost say it was in decline. Uh, there were far fewer people fishing from Hope Cove when I started and that continued to the point where eventually there was just myself fishing from Oak Cove. I'm Sue Morgan. I make crab pots, the traditional willow crab pot. I'm one of the last remaining people in Devon who make these pots. My husband is a, a crab fisherman, so I was interested in finding out how fishing used to be done. He remembers these being used 40 or 50 years ago, and he was taught by a fisherman who lived two or three doors up from us. And that same fisherman taught me how to do these shortly before he died. If you're in fishing, uh, you have to work every day that presents an opportunity for you to go fishing. I mean, our day typically starts at four or five o'clock in the morning, and if you're not prepared to do that, then don't entertain the idea of going fishing. I meet my crew and we go aboard the boat, getting aboard the boat just after four o'clock in the morning. We spend about 10 or 15 minutes on the boat preparing bait. We normally arrive at the first fleet of pots any time between half past five and six o'clock in the morning. And we would haul maybe five, 600 pots continuously until about half past two, three o'clock in the afternoon. It's very different from the average office job. You can't plan ahead with, with your, your social life because you're always watching the weather. In the winter, the weather on average might affect us to the extent where we don't go to sea for perhaps two or three weeks. The long-term decline is 
due largely to the fact that it's no longer possible to earn a decent living from small-scale fishing. The price of crab over the years, sadly, has not kept pace with rising costs of everything else. Over the last 10 or 15 years, the value of crab in, re in, in real terms has is, is gone down considerably. You're working so many more pots, and you have to work so many more pots, that it's just not the same industry as two men in a, a rowing boat or with a small engine. It's just not the same. So I think the, the threats to the industry for small boats and inshore boats are that people just won't bother to do it. It's really quite hard to get crew. The crew don't live in Hope Cove. I would go so far as to say that it would be impossible to find any crew in Hope Cove. And that's been the case for many, many years. The resident local population is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller to the extent now where in the winter you've barely got a community of people here at all. All the cottages in Inner Hope, every single one, are owned by holiday makers. There's not a single person living in them because local young men go elsewhere or do other things. It's, it's very interesting that when we were, we were young, young lads, there were many of us that couldn't wait to jump aboard a fishing boat and, and find out about fishing. But I don't see that happening at all anymore. I certainly have had no, no young person come to me and badger me to take them to sea to find out what it's all about. Whereas when I was a youngster, uh, I was continually pestering fishermen to take me to sea to, to help them out. I cannot see the fishing industry in Oak Cove ever returning to anything like it was 50, 60 years ago. But David's wife Sue is determined to keep one historical fishing tradition alive. These crab pots, the willow pots, had been used for hundreds of years. There are bits of fishing baskets that turn up in peat bogs from all over the country from time to time. So the idea of using willow to make fish traps has been around maybe thousands of years. But these just went straight out in the 70s. The wire came in and by the 80s and 90s, they'd gone over to the plastic and the current pot. That made me aware that traditional crafts were dying out in that they were never recorded at the time. So it needed to be carried on really. I feel really strongly that if you're making something traditional, you need to keep to the traditional process. And so I'd really rather make something that is a true pot for this area. Old photos tend to show pot makers in groups. So one would make funnels, one would be specialised on the ringing, someone else would do the bottoming in. You can't hand something on by just making one of it, that's the trouble. You've got to make it and make it until you know it inside out. It 
in the future in the village it would be really nice to get more crafts people and perhaps boat related businesses it would be nice to have a group of fishers carrying on here there's nothing to say that small scale fisheries shouldn't succeed but you've got to be very efficient at what you do it's it's very difficult to compete with the larger players in the market I don't see too many coming into the industry at all. No.